every time we look at a home. He says, well, we could take down that wall and we could gut the whole entire thing and we could re-insulate it and this and that. And it just really made sense to start from scratch and do it the way we want it. Of course it's going to be a zero energy house. <laughs> <laughs> I've done energy efficiency for many, many years. In fact, I started doing energy efficiency in high school. One of the things I've done professionally is actually help write the national definitions for zero energy buildings. So we have a lot of different reasons why people do sustainability. A lot of the times it is just that utility cost. Other times it's to raise a family and show them how to do it, connected to the grid, producing as much power as you're going to use. We have three boys and they're with us all the time because of the homeschooling and the benefits of that are they, they see these decision-making processes. Paul and Julia designed the house so that this would be passive heated. The fundamental concept of you know, a big unconditioned sunroom that can passively heat the house on a day like today, we're going to see in the course of the day the house temperature is going to go up five degrees or so just because of the windows. I'm roasting right now. It's toasty. What is it outside? Less than 10 degrees. These are high solar heat gain coefficient windows meaning that the sun comes in through these windows, it warms up the space, it also has mechanical ventilation that moves air through the house. This is a rather large home for a zero energy home. It's creeping up toward 3,600 square feet, which is a little bit large. That means that they have more plug loads, more potential for energy usage just because of the square footage of the house. We, our focus has always been bigger living space, smaller bedroom space, which encourages more community community and the family. One of the beauties of the bungalow style, it allowed us to have this nice 30 degree roof line. And from that, we mounted the solar panels directly to that. The next challenge was what kind of systems should we use? Probably the most unique energy saving feature of this home is that they use an air to water heat pump to warm the floors. I think it's a really innovative product in order to be able to use radiant floors and have a heat pump system tied to it. Right now in an all electric home, there are no combustion appliances here. So your biggest liability environmentally is how you cool a house. If you're gonna have active cooling, you have to use a refrigerant, typically. In this case, they don't use any hydrofluorocarbons. Instead, they use carbon dioxide, which is uh, much better for the environment. It's naturally occurring. We talked about this being about 3,500 square feet, um, and they put in a 9.4, I think, KW system. We will probably see this house as effective as a negative 12 house if we look at their energy bills you know, for two years in a row. Well, we've really tried to include the sustainability in all of our daily living. Whether it was the paint or the finishes that we're putting on the floor, we're trying to have as benign a product, you know, bringing that stuff into the house. In the recent years, it's become more and more mainstream to say zero energy. That is one of our buzzwords, which is great. But a lot of people think it's too complicated. And it, there's just a, a misnomer there. So it's important to have just a simple, simple to uh, live in, simple to control environment, and then be able to say on top of it, this cost half to a third what you know a track home would have cost on the same footprint. $87 a square foot. Nice and low, especially in Connecticut. Building a house is just lots of little decisions. And, and yes, yeah, sometimes it's overwhelming all those decisions, but you kind of have to think, you know, how does it impact you know, future generations when you do that?